Hi everyone. Today's video is sponsored by Boredom.com. Now my main hobby of uh, shooting and collecting military surplus rifles is on hold due to the coronavirus lockdown. So I wanted to find something else to do. Now, over the years of shooting and collecting um, these rifles, I've picked up bits of equipment here and there. Like gun shows, militaria shows, etc, etc. Not enough to make a display, not enough to wear if I wanted to do living history or reenactment. Just a few bits and pieces here and there, and my knowledge was fairly limited. Now, what I wanted to do was build um, two displays. One for the Italian campaign in World War II, because both my granddads uh, served in Africa and Italy. And one for the European theatre, which is something I'm quite interested in. So, I needed to understand what I had, what I needed to build these two displays. So, out came the boxes, from the shed, from the loft, from under the bed. And then I needed to understand what I needed great sources of information from websites such as khakiweb.com and some great um, video information from channels and um, really great channels such as Rifleman Moore which is it was a godsend if you're, if you're learning this stuff. Bloke on the Range regarding Blanco in, uh, right, um, uh, British muzzle loaders, uh, there's some great videos on equipment on the uh, Vickers machine gun website. I will put all the links in the description below. So, once I understood what I needed and what I had, I needed to then source the missing uh, equipment. So, eBay. Lots of uh, bidding, trying not to get carried away, making sure I understood what I was bidding for. Made a couple of mistakes, but luckily didn't burn too much money. And in the end, sourced enough to build two 37 pattern webbing kits. One that would remain unblankoed, as I said, and one that will be blankoed KG3, which is the colour for the, um, I think it's about 1941 and 1942 onwards. If I got that wrong, I'm sorry, I'll make the corrections below. Uniform. Well, uh, I already had a, an original South African issue blouse, um, khaki serge, is it khaki serge? Battle dress serge, so that's the blouse and a pair of battle dress trousers. Now, there was a diff there's a difference between the colors between the South African um, blouse and the trousers, but apparently for the Italian, especially in the Italian campaign, there was a lot of mismatch of equipment. So that's not a problem there. However, for the European theater, possibly a little bit earlier, I wanted uh, a, 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 the, the full matching British khaki shade of khaki. For that, um, looking around, in the end, I decided to go for a reproduction blouse from Soldier of Fortune. I thought the Soldier of Fortune stuff, after some reviews, seemed quite good for the, for the money. And when I got it, I compared it to an actual real jacket of blouse a friend owns, and I couldn't see the difference. Now, possibly some of you experts out there would be able to tell the difference, but you know, I don't know. And by the way, there's going to be mistakes in the kit. This is the first time I've done it. I'm not a member of a reenactment group or reenacting group. How do you say that? Don't know. So please let me know. You know, leave comments and uh, don't be don't be too harsh, but leave comments and let me know um, what I can do to improve. And with that, there's nothing else to say except uh, let's get on with it. So we're going to start off with blankoing, then we're going to assemble the kit, and then I'm going to try it all on and. Um, if I look like a total idiot or not. All right, <laughs> see you later. So just before I blank code, I've assembled all the um, uh, components just to check that you know everything kind of is the right length and fits, and it does. Um, here's something I prepared earlier, just to show you. Um, that's before Blanco was applied. And here is the KG3 applied. You can see the difference. Also did the water bottle. So that's, well, well, cover, sorry. So that's ready. Um, loads of information if you want to know more about Blanco in on blancoandball.com. You'll see the, um, the website in the, in the description below. And also Bloke on the Range has a great video on, um, on Blanco in equipment. So go and check that out. 
So, next thing to do is take it apart again and give it a good scrub with water and soap. And after that, we shall apply the KG-3. So, uh, while we wait for the Blanco to dry it, let's have a quick um, chat about the, the clothing. Now, some of it I've acquired for the project and some of it already had. Um, let's start off with the 1937 pattern battle dress trousers. These are made by Soldier of Fortune. Um, I think there are more expensive and possibly better copies out there. However, all the reviews I've read have been good. So, for the price, I think these are excellent. Now, these are the 1937 pattern. Um, not the 1940 pattern, we'll get onto that in a bit. So what do we have? The trousers. Okay, so we've got matte pocket, field dressing pocket here, um, brass buttons, belt loops, then of course at the back we've got the three buttons that, um, that attach to your blouse. Very thick serge. Um, really happy with these, they're a great fit. Um, the 1940 pattern, what was different? Basically, um, I think pretty much the same. Biggest difference though was that the uh, field dressing pocket I think was slightly bigger, but it also had a button on there. I think it was a Bakelite button. So there we go, those are the trousers. Now, as I mentioned um, mismatching some of the kit, I will be wearing for the Italian connection, I will be wearing this... Uh, 1940 pattern South African blouse, South African made blouse, made in 1945. So this is an original. So you can see here the difference in, in the shade of, of green. Um, I'm basing this on a picture of, or a photo of my grandfather in World War II, uh, which I'm putting up now. And you will see my granddad with a bunch of his, um, his pals and you can see some, some pretty interesting shades. Even though the photo is in black and white, you'll see that it's also, um, uh, you know, you can see the different shades of, um, of, of, of clothing. Apparently mismatching stuff was, um, you know, was, was quite normal, especially in, in that particular theater where you had people from, you know, soldiers from all over the Commonwealth, so different patterns. So there we go, this is a 1940 pattern, although rather strange that apparently the 1940 pattern should have the collar. Saying that, every picture I've seen on the web of original South African battle dress doesn't have that. So, um, so that's, that's that one done. Let's move that out of the way. For the Northwestern Europe theatre, I'll be using the um, battle, battle dress surge British style. This is, once again, a 1937 pattern, although I'm not quite sure why it's got a a lining on the collar. I was always led to believe that 1937 pattern um, didn't have that. Anyway, it's a good reproduction. Um, it's not the best, but for the price, it's 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 good. Reviews are good. I'm pretty happy with that. So, what have we got? Brass buttons. Even got a pretend label, and they they deliberately don't 
make it look like you know so you could pass it off to some poor unknown person that it's a, it's a, that it's an original so that's the jacket so as I said this one and this one perfectly matched ideal uh, you know for the for, for the look I want for the for the Northwest Europe campaign what about our shoes right so they're ammo boots. Now, uh, the basic model of ammo boot hadn't changed from about the 30s until about the 90s. I, I, I even had these back in the cadets. So, same style of pattern. Um, it's pretty much the same with World War II. Now, these, got them for a tenner off of eBay. Can't go wrong there. They're not perfect. They don't seem to have the pebble grain effect. And I think there's remnants of what seems to have been some heavy bull applied, um, probably belong to a guardsman at some point. They are hobnailed with the wrong pattern, but for, for now they're close enough and I'll eventually get around to replacing them with some, some um, a very good reproduction of World War II style. I think they sell them on Soldier of Fortune as well. Moving on, we have the gaiters. Okay, so um, these are basically, they go around your your, cut, your, your ankles, and I think the basic idea is to stop crud and crap getting down your boots or up your trousers. So these particular ones here are um, Web & Co, size 3, 1945. So, I suppose the next thing to do really is, um, is model it, yeah? Okay. I'm too sexy for my love. Too sexy for my love, love's going to leave me. I suppose we really should have a quick chat about the um, the webbing. So, um, seeing as most of the project has been about sourcing, um, you know, to, to build the two kits. So here we have a basic set of 37 pattern webbing. This is the unblancoed set that I'm going to be using for uh, the Italian campaign setup. And um, let's quickly go through it. So you've got the ammo pouches. Now, most people um, believe this is obviously for standard rifle ammunition. It's not. These were designed just to support the Bren gunner. It was, I think, pretty much considered the most important part of the, um, of the team. So these pouches would have been literally full of these. Okay, I've only got one in there now, but that's that. So each soldier would then be tasked with supplying the Bren gunner with the ammunition he needed. Now in the other pouch, we would also have a bandolier that contains your 303 ammunition. Now, once again, this is not for the rifleman. This is for the Bren gunner. This is to top up magazines. So the entire equipment is based around supporting the Bren gun. The individual soldier, infantryman, whatever, would be carrying a separate one of these strung over his shoulder, and that would be about 50 rounds for his own personal rifle use. Um, also, possibly in here, you would have a couple of meals grenades, a couple of grenades in there. Now, oh, just while we're here, just quickly show you. Lovely example of a bandolier. Uh, seen some use. We got 31st of uh, October 1921, and it was refilled again on the 16th of the 1st, 39. And the last time it was filled was in on the 6th of December 1946. So. Quite nice. Seen, seen quite a lot of, quite a lot of use. Right, get that out of the way. So, uh, covered those. Then, of course, we have the thirty-seven pattern belt, and holding the whole thing together, obviously, are the cross straps. So, I think they came in normal and long. Uh, I can't remember. I think forty-eight inch. Not, not sure the, the long. So there were various uh, variations. These are the economy version. So you can see here, it's um, two pieces put to one. 
Um, let me show you another version of, a, of an economy piece. It's wrapped around there. The earlier stuff was a bit posher and that was um, reduction woven. So it didn't have any, it just literally came down. No, I think it was a bit too, too expensive, more difficult to do. So on the left side, you would have had a loop. Uh, this has two because I didn't have another one of this length to go through. A um, bit mismatched, um, but you know, uh, it, do, it does what it's supposed to do. And I'm sure there was lots of mismatching. Uh, going back to the ammo pouches, actually, which I forgot to mention before, uh, these are the Mark Threes. Okay, so the Mark, so the Mark Ones, it was found that they hung too low because these were up here. They hung too low, so um, and so therefore, when you sat down, it would like dig into your thighs and your legs. So they moved these down here. That was for the Mark Two. I think the Mark Twos came in about 1942. Um, then of course they came in the Mark III, and the Mark III is basically the same as the Mark II, just very, very slightly longer. Uh, therefore it could fit the Sten gun mags. So there you go, that's the pouches. Uh, let's have a quick chat about the bayonet frog. So this is, um, this bayonet frog is not for the spike bayonet. It's a uh, 1907 pattern, um, um, sword bayonet. So what they did is because obviously they'd fall out, some clever clever chap came up with the idea of a of a leather tab that would hold that into place there. So that for a spike bayonet or the spike bayonet scabbard would not fall out. Um, over to the entrenching tool. So here we go. You obviously have the helve, and inside you would have entrenching tool. I've heard they're pretty much useless, but yeah, they carry them. This particular one is 1942 made. Now, there was a modification um, a little bit later, I think it's about 1944 actually, when they um, changed the helve for, well, they modified the helve to, speak, uh, to, to fit a replica um, spike bayonet attachment at the end. And that is for, obviously for looking for, well, you know, prodding the ground, you know, for mines. So that's, um, that's, well, yeah, that's basically a quick overview on, on you know, on the 37 pattern webbing. Uh, oh, last thing, there was an earlier skeleton um, styled um, water bottle carrier. Um, this is the, um, uh, this is the later, the later version. I think it was about 1940, and it, this is the uh, Mark VI war bottle. Uh, I think the Mark V, uh, if I got that right way around, uh, is, is a blue enameled one there. So, and actually this cork is actually from the New Zealand pattern. Um, so as we could quickly take a look at the small pack. Okay, so here's a small pack. In there you would have your bits and pieces, socks, uh, cardigan, your mess tins, uh, these are 1945 aluminium mess tins, um, they did have the steel ones which I think I'll get as well, there's a breech cover for the, for the Enfield but you would normally have your mess tins, maybe an extra water bottle, spare socks, bits and pieces in there. Now in battle order that would go on the back and in marching order, you would have the large pack, which I've left upstairs, so I'll show you that later, and that would attach down here. Um, and then the large pack on the back there. So, there you go, that was just a quick, brief introduction on the webbing. Um, now what we're going to do is get the Blanco kit, which is finally dried, and um, put it all together. So finally, the uh webbing the blank code webbing is dried and I suppose really we should put that together. So let's start off with the ammo pouches. So they go on here and into the designated belt um, things that they're called as such.
Okay. Do the other one. Obviously there's gonna be some, you know, adjustment afterwards. But, you know, this is just to give, give the idea. There you go. Now you'll notice that I haven't blankoed the back of the equipment. No need. Why waste blanco? And also there's some dates and stuff on that I don't want to lose. This is pretty much all the original World War II. So next we're gonna put on the cross straps. Give a little bit of, bit of room to attach other equipment below. There you go. Next we're gonna go on cross straps, so we go through like this. And then this will go. <laughs> That's some fun. This will go through like this. Okay. And then exactly the same on this side. So now we're going to attach the um, the entrenching tool. Okay, so uh, so this is going to go through like this, and then through the back, leaving enough webbing strap to attach the water bottle. So I'll do it again here. It's probably easier if I just. Do it like that. Okay, so you can see it's a little bit wonky, but like I said, we can sort all that out afterwards. Right, next, let's do the water bottle to what we have over here. Oops, so that'll be that way round. So you're going to go through there. And then you are going to attach through there. Okay. Right, last but not least, we're going to attach the L straps to the small pack. So. There you go. So there's a bit of noise in the background, and it's a bit windy, but it doesn't matter. Okay. And then See, um, see, if it, see if it fits. Obviously there's gonna, as I said, we'll need some adjustment, so. Okay. Looking good, eh? And then this, would then just pop on the back and attach here. And here. Okay. A few minor adjustments still to be made, but there we go. So before I finally get to 
get domed up in, um, in my creations. Let's just have a quick look at some of the equipment we haven't spoken about so far. So the helmets, standard Mark II. These are both 1943 made um, shells and liners. One's scrimmed up, so that's gonna be a bit more deserty, a bit more Italian for that setup. And then uh, um, the, the green scrim and green paint for the, um, for the Northwestern Europe campaign. Respirators, these are Mark V, general service res uh, respirator. I'll probably wear that for the, uh, for the Italian one. Although to tell you the truth, it could have been the later um, Mark II light, which was introduced in 1943. But you know, it, it's not like they changed over straight away. So you see a bit of mismatch uh, um, in, in, in various photos between the general service and the Mark II light. So, this one's actually made in 1943. Stick in a couple of pics so you can actually see what they look like. The rifles, I could use either. I have here a number one Mark III and a number four Mark I. The number one Mark III is at the top and the number four Mark I is at the bottom with a sticky out bit at the end. The bayonet for the number one Mark III will of course be the 1907 pattern sword bayonet and scabbard. I'm probably going to use a number one Mark III for the Italian setup just because in most photos you see them carrying the number one Mark III's. And the number four Mark I I'll use for the other setup. <laughs>